Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in tonight for what's next for stem cells and regenerative medicine with Dr. Sharon McClellan. Uh, my name is Jordan. I'm with the Metabolic Medical Institute, and we thank you for taking your time tonight um, to start by thanking Dr. McClellan for sharing her time with us. Um, she is the new director of the Stem Cell Fellowship with Metabolic Medical Institute. She has over 20 years of experience as an anti-aging medicine physician and over 10 years of stem cell research. She's trained over 500 doctors in regenerative medicine. So thank you so much for joining us, and I'll turn it over to you now, Dr. McClellan. Thank you for the introduction, and welcome to all of you uh, to tonight's webinar. And I am so very excited to share this with you because um, with my research over the last 10 years, I know that regenerative medicine and stem cell therapies are the most important and most exciting next step that anti-aging physicians can take. And I do believe that we are the group that is um, best able to help advance this field. We've worked really hard to create educational programming to help physicians have a basis in cellular biology and an understanding of what can be done um, in offices within the United States today um, with competence and with a, the proper foundation in order to uh, conduct these therapies. So the field is advancing quickly. The science is advancing quickly, and our intent is to create a community where physicians can share information, stay current, and become competent in cellular medicine. Um, so we're very excited to be involved here. So what's next in regenerative medicine? I hope it's that all of you will join the Stem Cell Fellowship and uh, join us in, in this effort. Um, I have, as Jordan told you, been working for 10 years conducting clinical research and um, have learned a great deal. And I'm really anxious to share the colleagues that I've developed over this last 10 years and the knowledge and experience that I've developed um, uh, with you so that you um, can feel secure about doing these things um, in the best way. Anti-aging, as you know, and, and that's where I started, and I'm still practicing anti-aging and regenerative medicine I have for 20 years. And this specialty, as you know, is founded on the application of advanced scientific and medical technologies basically to keep people well and to promote optimal health and to reverse age-related dysfunction. And cellular medicine will provide you with an additional tool along with everything else that you've learned in the fellowships that will help you to treat things that we do not have solutions for uh, in any of the other therapies. So we optimize hormone balance antioxidant status, immune status, cardiovascular status, basically our whole patient. And we're trained to do that, and I believe that our training provides expertise and excellence that is lacking in the specific traditional medicine subspecialties because they don't look at the patient holistically. So we have this training, and it's just the best platform for the next step, which is cellular medicine. And the cellular medicine therapies work far better when the, cell, when the patient has been optimized so that the degenerative process is stopped and then you can start to recreate health and rebuild. Regenerative medicine is the process of using the patient's own cells or tissue um, or the cells of others um, and to uh, use regenerative mechanisms to replace or regenerate diseased or injured tissue 
to help restore normal or optimal function. And um, it works, and it works well. Regenerative medicine, and we're at the very infancy of this field, is involves, yes, stem cell injections, but also um, scaffolds and delivery systems, gene therapies, and um, a lot of, of very advanced technology that is evolving that allows us to make these therapies better. Adult stem cells, which we will focus on in the fellowship, um, come from a variety of different sources. They're found in many tissues, but what's clinically relevant to us is that they are found in bone marrow and adipose tissue, and they're also found in um, amniotic tissue, umbilical cord tissue, and we will address all of those in the fellowship. The primary role of stem cells in your body is to repair the tissue in which they are found. They're multipotent, which means that they can differentiate into a specific subset of cell types. And adult stem cells exhibit plasticity, which means they also respond to the niche environment that they are injected into. Mesenchymal cells, which are cells of interest, um, also come from fat, bone marrow, and cord blood. And we think that these cells are um, very useful in clinical practice, and they've proven to be. And they are defined by, in the cell lab, which you'll learn all of these things and, and what they exactly mean, but plastic adherence. And they have a fibroblast-like morphology when you look at them microscopically. And they have specific phenotypic characteristics, which um, define them with a cluster of differentiation, the CD cell surface markers. These cells are important because they have immunomodulatory properties, differentiation potential into um, fat, cartilage, bone, and uh, blood vessels. And they also help to restore um, the health of tissues by secreting multiple growth factors that alter the cellular mechanisms and um, promote uh, a healthful state. Mesenchymal stem cells, they're called pericytes, so those two terms are synonymous because they're found in the connective tissue that wraps around blood vessels throughout the body. And the pericytes possess immunomodulatory, anti-apoptotic, angiogenic, and um, they are mitotic and they resist the scar cascade. They accomplish regenerative capabilities via a complex secretion versus by exosomes and signaling of growth factors and cytokines. So these cells um, actually create a healing environment by secreting growth factors that call other stem cells to the area, trigger a healing response and a regenerative response. And so if you think about what we've just said, it can form new blood vessels, promote more blood vessel growth. It can form new tissue. It can help to restore function. Important considerations in offering stem cell treatments in your offices within the United States are that you have a validated and standardized method for yielding a defined cell product. Just as in using a nutraceutical or a pharmaceutical or a surgical implant, you want to know exactly what you're injecting into a patient, and cells are no different. So you need to have a defined cell product, and we will teach you how to ascertain if you have that. We will show you how to create that in your offices, um, and also to, to analyze uh, other cell products. That you have that you adhere to GMP manufacturing um, for your consumables and reagents and equipment that you use in your office because um, all of these things have to be done to a standard um, approved equipment approved solutions that you have uh, proper record keeping consistent with laboratory practices so good laboratory practices and that you are working under approved clinical protocols 
And all of these things are important and they might sound overwhelming, but we've simplified them and we can show you these techniques and protocols uh, in training. Um, we'll teach you cell counting. And cell counts equal a dose. And so in order to help um, understand um, your outcomes and to contribute to the data that will advance this field, you really need to understand the dose relationship to your clinical outcome. Um, we will show you how to do cell counting with Tripan Blue and a hemocytometer and also the different automated devices, um, including salometry and flow and so forth. And that will be interactive in the first module. Um, colony forming units, um, it's important not only to be able to look at the numbers of cells that you have, but also to understand the health and the viability of your cells. And the gold standard for that is um, whether these cells will grow in culture. So all of the techniques that we have have been validated to, for cell counts and for colony forming units. Cell characterization, also you need to know the population of cells that you are uh, injecting and using in your patient to be able to predict and understand and record outcomes. The cell yields can be affected by a variety of things. And remember, if you're harvesting tissue, whether it's bone marrow or adipose um, tissue from your patient, the cell yield can be affected by your surgical technique, the location of the tissue harvested, and this goes for both fat or bone marrow. Um, enzymatic digestion or isolation techniques, separation techniques, and the quality of your reagents, and how you actually are handling the cells and tissue. So all of these things have been standardized in um, patent pending techniques so that you can be assured that you have specific cell um, products to inject into your patient. The stem cell kit collection um, we provide kits for you um, as, as really a convenience to you because everything has to be standardized and it is challenging to do that um, otherwise. Everything has to be GMP manufactured, it has to be standardized, nothing can be varied in order to assure yourself that you have a standardized cell product. Um, so all the laboratory kits have everything that you need to perform a procedure. Clinical trial protocols, um, more and more um, the doctors have come to us that we've trained in the harvesting and isolation techniques and um, everyone wants to understand how to treat all the different degenerative disorders and these things must be done under um, IRB protocol for a number of reasons. Um, one is that we want standardized treatment techniques with inclusion and exclusion criteria so that we can accumulate data to understand um, how to improve the field, how to make sense out of the outcomes, and to um, operate responsibly because still today these are new therapies so they're considered experimental. Um, we as anti-aging physicians are familiar with being on the cutting edge of science um, because we have been for 20 years. <laughs> so, you know, that's not new to us, but still it's very helpful to operate according to protocols. It also gives physicians the opportunity to reacquaint themselves with all of the um, current standardized therapies and um, to be consistent uh, in treat treating patients. So. An IRB is um, a committee that's formally designed to approve and monitor and review biomedical research involving human subjects. Its purpose is to protect the rights and welfare of human subjects that are involved in research. The authority is granted by the FDA to approve, disapprove, or require modification of the research, and it provides critical, ethical, regulatory, and scientific oversight of each protocol. It's mandated to adjudicate all adverse events, and serious adverse events must be reported to the FDA. So that is um, all the protocols that I'm about to share with you are 
IRB approved protocols. Um, the IRB studies, it allows you to standardize cellular techniques for specific diseases, gain insight by data collection, and we have worked really hard to establish a data collection system to make this easy for you. And so we'll actually be sharing data should you join the IRB studies. Establish safety and efficacy profile of the treatment. Um, this helps establish the physician's credibility and to ensure patient safety. The current approved protocols are osteoarthritis, facet joint dysfunction, SI joint dysfunction, degenerative disc disease, rheumatoid arthritis, type 2 diabetes, uh, frailty syndrome, uh, which is really an anti-aging protocol, congestive heart failure, renal failure, autoimmune disorders, COPD, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, erectile dysfunction, and critical limb ischemia. And we have others that are in the approval process. Um, the IND for osteoarthritis, um, we recently received funding um, for actually getting FDA approval for our patented methodology for the stromal vascular fraction. And we're doing this to help create a standard because so many people have entered the uh, stem cell space and they're not using validated techniques. And it's our desire to help standardize this field um, by going through the FDA and get approval for one indication with the idea that we will then be able to hopefully use it as an off-label use if we are successful. But, um, you know, it's been submitted and we're optimistic that we will go forward. As I said, we do have funding. So ageless IRB study for osteoarthritis, um, these are the, this is some of the data that we've collected under just the IRB study. Now an IRB study is different um, from FDA approval. But we have 30 active enrolling clinical sites and a six-month follow-up from 30 clinical sites on 324 patients. The delivery method was an interarticular injection. The study endpoint included things that you can do in your offices and all of the protocols have been designed that way um, except for the congestive heart failure and the cardiac which obviously needs to be done in a cardiac uh, cath lab or um, in a um, hospital. The study endpoints include adverse events, short form McGill pain questionnaire, visual analog pain scales, and the present pain inventory. So it's just a small amount of paperwork. It takes a few minutes and it helps us to understand the efficacy of what we're doing and it helps you because then you will be able to represent this to your patients. Your patients will ask you, doctor, how successful has this been? What can I anticipate? Um, so as there was a statistically significant change in the short form um, pain questionnaire, a 76% 76, 76 average improvement over baseline. And I would say to you, regardless of your subspecialty, your patients have osteoarthritis. Um, and it's a, a wonderful procedure to be able to offer to them because there are really no good solutions for osteoarthritis. The anti-inflammatory agents are, you know, have side effects. Prednisone has a degenerative effect. The procedures are um, short-term health. and arthritis in the knot that are either performance athletes or trying to avoid surgery. The present pain inventory, 30 clinical sites again, 61% improvement over baseline. With COPD, the delivery method um, is both inhalation and intravenous injection. Primary outcome measurements are the number and frequency of adverse events 
Secondary outcome measures are pulmonary function testing, exercise capacity as measured by a six-minute walk test, and quality of life scores. With 112 patients treated in the trial to date with the data recorded, the average improvement of 24 points in the St. George Respiratory Questionnaire. And this is a progressive disease, and honestly, I've not seen anything else that improves the quality of life in these patients, but this does. There's an average increase of 176 meters in the six-minute walk test and a reduced dependence on oxygen and or medications. But um, again, there are no really good solutions in traditional medicine for this, and um, the results have been very gratifying. So why add stem cell therapy to your practice? For anti-aging doctors, it's the next logical step. We are committed to creating wellness in our patients, and this is an extraordinarily valuable tool that is very effective in multiple different conditions. And as our patients age, honestly, I believe you will need to take this step. Patients seek alternatives to traditional pharmaceutical options. We've already selected out for those patients. And stem cell therapies is just um, a wonderful addition to an anti-aging practice. It can be formed in the it can be performed in the office in a couple of hours under local anesthesia, and it has a brilliant safety profile. Um, the revenue sources, because doctors always ask me when they're adding a new treatment to their offices. Um, you know, what they can anticipate in revenue because we all have to pay our bills, our staff, and for our training. And the cell-assisted fat transfer um, is five to $10,000, regenerative orthopedics, 7,500 per injection. Stem cell treatments for degenerative disease are 7,500 plus. And that's in our office, in many other offices, they're charging far higher fees. How do you get started? The Stem Cell Fellowship. What I've learned over 10 years, um, because I have medical training, but I did not have cell biology training. And I would like to share with all of you um, how to conduct yourself in a cell lab, how to understand the literature, how to feel competent in making decisions about cell types and methodology so that you actually can legitimately represent, represent yourself as a stem cell expert in your community and to your patients. You'll have the opportunity to participate in 25 IRB approved clinical trials and probably more as we go. The ability to responsibly bank patients' cells and that um, is of interest to many patients. Our cells are aging as we speak, and so the idea is the younger your cells, uh, the better off you are, and also just to provide insurance. Or if a patient has a severe degenerative disease, it's unlikely that one treatment will address the entire disease process, and they may need multiple treatments. Um, access to allogeneic cell types, and there are specific conditions that do respond better to allogeneic cells, and we can provide resources, very good vetted resources for you to uh, access these cells. And then ongoing clinical and scientific support. We have a wonderful group of cell biologists, uh, well-trained physicians at a university level that are very supportive of this fellowship and a very collaborative because it's a relatively small community at this point and everyone is anxious to help provide standardization and share information um, because the treatments are so successful and compelling. The Stem Cell Fellowship has advanced programming in the latest advancements, translational approaches from bench to bedside, procedural protocols, valid technologies and to try to give you a sense of how to understand what is valid in the technology. Designed exclusively for anti-aging physicians and I have a bias in thinking that 
we are have a better understanding of physiology and metabolism uh, and genomics than most. It promotes excellence through intensive evidence-based educational experience and is reinforced with hands-on clinical preceptorships. It's the only fellowship certification program provided by a learning institution. It's accredited by the University of South Florida Department of Professional Development and George, I think George Washington through MMI. Um, and it's sponsored by the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine and the Metabolic Medical Institute. It provides certification in regenerative medicine. There is a written exam and a case study submission. Successful completion will result in a listing in, uh, on the A4M website. Provides a community of peers, and this is critical because it is a new um, area and we really need to um, create this community and uh, share information, share experiences because we don't have, um, you know, we don't have uh, long-term data to rely upon. It's a forum for idea exchange and the organization in which to gather support for various issues in regenerative medicine. Creates standardization of care in regenerative treatments, creates subspecialty that can be nationally recognized. The stem cell fellowship is designed, and this is a curriculum that was actually built um, to help you have a foundation. Um, and then to build on that foundation to provide therapies in your office according to your area of expertise and your scope of practice. So it has, the module one is basic cellular science. And this sounds boring, but actually we're making it interactive so that you will be able to practice cell counting. You'll be able to actually view different cell types with microscopy that's projected. You will be involved in, um, in the module so that you'll have an understanding of the basic cellular science and feel competent in it. Um, I think that's really important. I know that when I entered this field 10 years ago, it had been a long time since I had spent time in a biology laboratory. Um, it had been a long time since I'd used a microscope. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I think that we need to reacquaint ourselves with this basic science in order to enter this new field. Module two, best practices in regenerative medicine. This is harvesting techniques, isolation techniques, different types of um, isolation processes. Um, and again, we're going to be working with uh, physicians who have expertise in this field. Stem cell and module three is the clinical module where you will actually clinically do hands-on practice in harvesting tissue and isolating um, cell products for use in your clinic. Module four is translational regenerative medicine. It's a focus on musculoskeletal and neurodegenerative conditions. Module five, translational regenerative medicine, focusing on cardiovascular, vascular, and respiratory conditions. So it is specific to different disease types and different conditions that we all see in our practices um, with um, the a review of all of the, the work that is being done worldwide and with presentation from researchers who are published and currently doing this, this work and this research. Elective modules are um, renal, hepatic, GI, autoimmune conditions, and uh, genital urinary, sensory organs, and cancer. And then module eight is an in-depth study of biomaterials, bioscaffolds, gene therapy, and tissue engineering. The Stem Cell Fellowship is um, the clinical elective modules. So when you come to the clinic, if you want preceptoring specifically in these things, we offer regenerative and advanced um, orthopedics, the use of PRP in regenerative medicine, in all of our orthopedic injections, we will show you how to use ultrasound so that you can inject under visualization. 
and we will review the different um, inclusion and exclusion criteria, the pre and post care, and then fat transfer to facial, gluteal, and breast with uh, cell augmented fat. Module one is the basic cellular science. It's gonna be offered for the first time in December, 11th through 13th um, in Las Vegas, and it will provide a foundation for you, which I think is essential for you to understand the literature, to understand uh, what is being offered to you in treatment of your patients, and I'm anxious for all of you to have this uh, foundation uh, in order to competently practice in this field. We reviewed the history and highlights of the field of regenerative medicine and translational medicine, possessed a thorough understanding of cell anatomy and biology, including cell structure, function, transport, and cell cycles, understand basic stem cell properties and processes, including self renewal and cell cycle re regulation, discuss the importance of the stem cell niche environment and cell signaling, and analyze the properties of the following cell types embryonic, amniotic, fetal, cord blood, placental, peripheral blood, umbilical, bone marrow, adipose, and induced pluripotent cells. Compare the risks and benefits of autologous versus allogeneic stem cell approaches. You will need to have both as you advance in your scope of practice and your experience in the field. Develop working knowledge of cell markers specific to stem cells and their importance in regenerative medicine, and to participate in interactive sessions with leading experts demonstrating and comparing the latest cell imaging, labeling, and counting techniques. The faculty is um, Dr. Rafael Gonzalez, um, who is the Vice President of Research and Development for Da Vinci Biosciences. He is um, one of the um, most competent stem cell scientists that I've had the pleasure of working with over this 10 years. And um, he is going to be very involved throughout the fellowship. Um, da Vinci Biosciences is the largest provider of tissue and cells worldwide to academic universities and to pharmaceutical companies. And um, they are a very well-funded company that can afford to do everything at the highest level. He's responsible for the development of clinical stem cell applications for severe disease and trauma states, the author of numerous research and clinical studies regarding stem cells. Roberto Vasquez Padron, um, he's from the Department of Surgery and Vascular Biology Institute at the University of Miami School of Medicine. His area of expertise is stem cells and cardiovascular and vascular disease. Um, 50 plus scientific research articles and currently participating in three NIH active studies regarding restenosis and arterial venous stenosis. Shalesh Kasal is the medical director of the Retina Specialty Institute, adjunct professor um, at the Department of Ophthalmology, New York Medical College, Yale and Johns Hopkins graduate. Area of expertise is stem cells and eye disorders. 30-plus um, scientific study publications. Gabriel Nister, um, MD, PhD, is Vice President of Research at Caladrius Biosciences, former PhD at the University of California Irvine, area of expertise is embryonic and IPS cells, 20-plus scientific application publications regarding embryonic stem cells numerous patents regarding stem cell treatments and processes. Tan Inche, um, MD, PhD, Associate Professor of Pathology at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. He's a former Assistant Professor of Pathology at Harvard University, over 50 scientific research articles, area of expertise, cancer stem cells. And Asara, Kasari, PhD, is a cell scientist at Da Vinci Biosciences. Her area of expertise is cell signaling and protein-protein interaction. 15 scientific publications covering various types of cells and stem cells, and currently conducting research dealing with the differentiation of cartilage 
from bone marrow stromal cells. In closing, um, the addition of regenerative medicine to anti-aging practice is a natural extension for us. The Stem Cell Fellowship ensures successful entry into this rewarding endeavor has become part of a select team of stem cell fellowship trained practitioners. So um, at this point, I would be happy to take any questions. And I invite you to join us in Las Vegas, uh, December 11th through 13th, uh, 2015. Please contact your A4M educational advisor and um, for, for any additional information, uh, please contact Janet Daher at jdaher at agesinstitute.com. Thank you so much, Dr. McQuillan. That was fantastic. Um, I have not yet received any questions, but if I do, I will forward them to Janet so they are answered. Um, again, thank you everyone for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you in Las Vegas December 11th through the 13th. And thank you so much, Dr. McClellan. Thank you, Jordan. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay, how can you tell how many people?